Okay, so Jonathan, your, your speech in Clonus, taking you back to 1989, Armagh winning their first Ulster title for 17 years. It was an amazing speech, and it's a, it's a great memory that so many Armagh fans have. Demonstrated the passion and commitment that you, you showed in the club and county jersey for a long number of years. Yeah, well, the, the, the first thing I wanted to do was not just say a couple of token words in Irish, to actually give respect to the language deserved and have a half and half maybe a speech in Irish. And I suppose the night before, it was very interesting, myself and Paul McGrain would have always shared room together. And in the middle of the night, I was thinking if we had won, because you're not supposed to think of these things really, but you have to, because you have to presume you're going to win. I, I said to him, Paul, are you awake? He says, I am. I says, this speech of mine, and he put on the light and he sat up. He says, what are you thinking? I says, I'm thinking of mentioning all the fellas who played for those 17 years, their full career, and didn't win a medal, because we have to, they, they are part of this. They cre helped to create this. And, we wrote a list of them, you know, the likes of Martin McQuillan, Neil Smith, uh, Martin Ty, Aidan Short, all of those guys who had come the whole way with us and who had just maybe retired the previous year. And I just felt it was important that at that moment uh, for us that we would think of the fellas who weren't there. Brilliant. And um, what other highlights do you have then of your, your playing career, both at club and county level? Well, uh, even with college, St Mary's University College in 1989, was, we were the first group ever to win a cigar. So we only had 60 fellas in the whole college were playing against teams that had 6,000. I mean, it's just a crazy statistical victory for us and uh, St Mary's managed to do it again a few years ago. Obviously with my club, I won a minor title as well in 1984 and that was a massive thing. That was the first time we had done it as well. Um, at some great uh, times with my club, we won Division 1 twice as well. We never won a championship, but we, had a, we, we, did, we honoured all of those teams there last in November. We had a brilliant gala dinner. But obviously, I mean, the highlight, I suppose, would have to be winning the Ulster title in 1999 for Armagh. It was just a, a very special year because you know that it means so much to so many people. And actually that year, because there was no back door, every game was a championship match, it was, a, it was like a final. And there was actually a, a you know, the, the, a crowd come onto the field at the uh, pitch invasion at the end of every, of every match. And mm -hmm. finally when we did it, just the, the raw emotion was amazing. Our association is a very rich culture, and you've had many involvements within that. Uh, just to mention a few, the likes of SCORE and Irish language. How important is that rich culture that we have? Well, without the Irish language and without SCORE, what are we only? We're just an ordinary sporting organisation. We would always say that we're not just a sporting organisation, we're also a national movement. It's about our identity. The GA is not, for us, it's not uh, just you know recreational distraction for us. It's our very life, it's our very DNA. And within that, it's our identity. And particularly in the North, it was a very important element of our identity for many, many years. And that is where the language and the commitment to the language really chimes with my own worldview because I, I love the language myself and I love the, the, the culture. And I mean, I've had lifetime involvement in SCORE. I was national chairman for three years on the Sean Kelly, and I still, and my children uh, are still involved in SCORE. My daughter Megan won a solo sting in All Ireland uh, back in 2009. So all of these things were as proud of as anything we would do in the field. Um, so you've also got an incredible CV in terms of administration within the organisation. Um, so how does that prepare you for? The potential role of Ukraine? Well, it gets you to know what way the GA works, to how governance works in the GA. I mean, on the Sean McCaig back in 2000, I was the very first Players Committee chairman, and then, as I said, I was National Chairman of SCORE, then I was in the Medical Scientific Welfare Committee, and then I was involved in creating and writing a recruitment toolkit uh, uh, under Christy Cooney's uh, presidency and the pitch, pre the pitch Presentations Committee, and then I was back on Central Council as the ARMA representative and on the Kishja Banished Act at the National Management Committee, and now I'm on Ulster Council. I was, for Egan O'Farrell, I was chair of the Standing Committee on Playing Rules and we brought into Mark, uh, in, in, which I think has really improved the game. All of those things are important and are relevant, but for me, I think the thing that maybe most qualifies me for that is the fact that within my own club, I played right up until a couple of years ago, um, at age 51, uh, in, a, in a reserve championship match against Clannagale. <laughs> <Gale. laughs> and my wife took me aside at the end of it and said, maybe it's time to knock this in the head. But uh, since then, I've been the chairman of my club for three years, and now I'm into my third year as secretary of my club. I think for any GA president, that's the sort of apprenticeship you need to go through within your club, because at the end of the day, we are a grassroots organisation. And you've quite an apprenticeship too within communications and media. How important is it to embrace the, the new technologies that are there today? I think in the modern world, the message is very important. If you think about the GS5 strategic goals, obviously one of them is the governance, which is very important. The other one is providing opportunities for, for playing. Mm -hmm 
The third one is developing volunteers. And the fourth and the fifth are equally important. The fourth one is communication and the fifth one is protecting our association. Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that communicating our message and communicating our values to people are very, very important. And you use now whatever technologies there are. I think the GA is very good at using social media to, to uh, communicate our message. At times, perhaps in, in terms of controversy, maybe at times you might be a bit slow to come out and defend our message. Um, but that's definitely something that I would like to involve myself in. So when did you first consider um, going forward for the role of Rick Ron? President of the GA is something that people have mentioned to me for about this past 20 years. Someday you'd be president of the GA, someday you'd be president of the GA. And I just decided at this stage, I could have waited for another few years, but I still have a lot of energy, I'm still quite young. Um, um, you know, and I just felt that it, I owed it maybe to come on new class scale this time when I still have so much to give to put my name forward uh, for the position. And um, I took a lot of advice from people who I would re greatly respect and, and they said that maybe this is your time to go. And if you do, you can still, you'll still have a lot of your life left to give back as a coach or as an administrator with your own club. So um, is there ever a right time? Is there ever a wrong time? But this is this time and I'll find out very quickly whether it was a good decision or not. And how do you value uh, the county's endorsement and forward me? I think it's very important because I wanted to, to get that and I, I got an, a, a unanimous endorsement from the county board. I think that Mickey Savage, the chair and all of the executive in Armagh have been very, very supportive of me and I, I thank them for doing that. And the office, the, uh, the administrative office has also been at my disposal as well. And uh, that's very important because you, you cannot be aloof from you know where you have come from. You can never forget the, the bush that you dried your shirt on. Um, <laughs> and that's, for me, that's Armagh, having captained Armagh and having been involved all my life at the administrative level in Armagh, as a steward even, mm -hmm. and on Central Council, and now as also Council representative. I just feel that it's wonderful that they have the faith in me that they want me to be president of the GA. And if you are successful in the presidential election, what are your themes and goals that you're going to be focusing on? Well, my themes will be based around the six values of the GAF, which are community, the, the respect for the amateur status, uh, respect at, at all levels of the association, particularly for administrators and referees, um, player welfare, and not just county player welfare, but for all of, the, all of the players who play our game, developing them as people. Inclusion, I think that we want to be an inclusive organisation. Our manifesto states that we all belong. I want everybody to feel that they can belong in a real way, not just as players, but also as administrators, as supporters, as parents, and just as friends of the association. And obviously then, you know, teamwork, and, and volunteerism, for me that is the key thing. All of these are the strands when you pull them together that they make the GA what they are. But in particular, if I was to focus on a couple of things, I think that we need probably a longer term strategy to address the demographic changes that have happened in Ireland, the urbanisation of the country. Our footprint is very much in rural Ireland. We are now moving to an urban society. There are threats there, but there's also great opportunities. And I think maybe we need an amalgamation toolkit. We need a new club toolkit uh, to address all of these new challenges, which can become great opportunities for the association. Sounds wonderful. Um, one final question, you'll be glad to hear at this stage, Jarth. Um, Jack Boothman, whenever he was president, uniquely he set out to visit all the schools in Ireland mm -hmm. um, during his campaign. Would you have any sort of unique sort of things that you'd like to achieve and if you were successful? Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of a GA president leaving a legacy as such. It's only three years and very often then if you start looking to leave a legacy you end up tinkering with what is very important for us. You leave a, a legacy after 10 years. I would like to be part of a legacy of the GA that we would look at two things. Firstly, um, Egon O'Farrell a commissioner report called towards 2034 when he was president that said if we leave the association as it is what will we be like on the 150th anniversary and the first thing was that we will be semi-professional. I would like to be the president that pulls that back, pulls the amateur status back, pulls the volunteerism right back and the first to become back to being what we are, a grassroots organisation. I remember Jack Boodman visiting this school, I remember the wonderful atmosphere that it created and as a result every single school child in Ireland knew who Uachtaran Common New Class Gale was and I thought it was a fantastic idea. I don't know if I would have the energy to do that <laughs> but I would certainly like to try it. Okay. Well as in 1999 whenever the Armagh fans and the county board and everybody was on the pitch listening to your speech we all look forward and we'll be cheering you on on the 20th and we, we wish you the best of luck from Linwood's Armagh TV on the 20th of home. Gormagh Brennan.